I will discuss different topic. Similar matrices. This is actually very interesting topic. What is the similar matrices? We all of us know from every linear transformation we can generate a matrix. And I will discuss today two different matrix but they are similar means some property of similarity are equivalent of this to different matrix and this is our goal of this lecture what is this actual similar matrix and what is the properties of similar matrices at first i will start by an example consider a linear transformation a from r3 to r2 defined as f of x comma y comma z equal to x plus y comma y plus z for this consider two ordered basis for r3 at first consider standard basis who is denoted as beta 1 1 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 1 similarly consider one basis in r2 who is denoted as gamma 1 this is 1 0 and 0 1 and consider another basis in r3 who is this denoted as beta 2 this is 1 1 0 0 1 1 and 0 0 1 and similarly consider another ordered basis in r2 this is not standard basis in r2 this is denoted as gamma 2 this is 1 0 and 1 1 now i will see the matrix representation with respect to the basis beta 1 gamma l and another matrix representation which is denoted as b with respect to the basis beta 2 comma 2 notice here f of 1 0 0 is equal to 1 0 f of 0 1 0 equal to 1 1 which we can write with respect to this basis gamma 1 1 0 0 1 as 1 times 1 0 plus 1 times 0 1 and f of 0 0 1 equal to 0 1 therefore the matrix representation with respect to this basis beta 1 and gamma 1 would be just write it as column wise 1 0 1 1 0 1 this is the matrix representation with respect to beta 1 gamma 1 now i will see the matrix representation of this linear transformation with respect to different basis beta 2 gamma 2 of same linear transformation f of x comma y comma z equal to x plus y comma y plus z here f of 1 comma 1 comma 0 equal to 2 comma 1 and since gamma 2 equal to 1 0 1 1 that means this would be 1 times 1 0 plus 1 times 1 1 and f of 0 1 1 would be 1 2 this is equal to minus 1 times 1 0 plus 2 times 1 1 and f of 0 0 1 equal to 0 1 this is equal to minus 1 times 1 0 plus 1 times 1 1 that means the matrix representation corresponding to a with respect to the different basis beta 2 and gamma 2 would be here the coefficient 1 1 that means write it as as a column here the coefficient minus 1 2 this is minus 1 2 and this is minus 1 1 ok this is the matrix corresponding to this a with respect to the basis beta 2 and gamma 2 are you getting OL means with respect to different basis beta 1 and gamma 1 and beta 2 and gamma 2 I will get to different matrix of same linear transformation f of x comma y comma z equal to x plus y comma y plus z 
okay and the actual concept is consider a linear operator t from vector space to vector space and u1 u2 un be the basis vector of the vector space consider a is the matrix of t with respect to u1 u2 un such that t of uj equal to summation i equal to 1 to a a i j e y where t u1 t u2 up to t u n equal to u1 u2 un times a and consider if v1 v2 vn be the another basis then obviously vj equal to summation i equal to 1 to n x i j e y where v1 v2 vn equal to u1 u2 un times x now applying t both side then this would be t vj equal to summation i equal to 1 to n x i j times t e y which is equivalent to actually t v 1 comma t v 2 up to 2 v n equal to t u 1 comma t u 2 up to t u a u n times x and notice t u 1 comma t u 2 comma t u n equal to t u j equal to summation i equal to 1 to n a i j u i this is equal to u1 u2 up to un times ax now write u1 u2 un as a v1 v2 vn notice v1 v2 vn equal to u1 u2 un times x that means this is equal to v1 v2 up to vn x inverse times ax Okay, and consider this x inverse a x as a b. Then the matrix T with respect to the basis vector v1, v2, vn is b. And this is the actual concept of the similarity. Here I have considered it with respect to the basis u1, u2, un the matrix is a and i have got with respect to the basis v1 v2 vn the matrix would be capital b then so the definition is consider ab belongs to m n cross n matrix over the field k then a is similar to b which is denoted as a equivalent to b if there exists an invertible matrix x such that b equal to x inverse a x then we can tell a is similar to b or a is equivalent to b this is the definition of similar matrices actually two matrices a and b are called similar if they represent the same linear transformation t with respect to defined basis which is noted as a equivalent to b and this is another definition a and b are similar if there exists an invertible matrix x such that b equal to x inverse a x okay o n and in any book this definition has indicated such type for a square matrix a and b of order n then a is similar to b if there exists an invertible matrix p such that b equal to p inverse time a p where any invertible matrix for any book has indicate as p then we can tell a is similar to b and the notation is such type a is similar to b till now i have 
Starting to concept one row equivalent and two similarity. Okay. And what is the concept of row equivalence? In my hand, I have two different matrices. When we can tell these two matrices are both row equivalence, reduces these two matrices as an equivalent form, then always I will get same solution of these two different matrices and we can tell these two different matrices are low equivalent from and this is the concept of similar matrices are you getting this is some oh. nice property of similar matrices one property is similar matrices always have same eigenvalues with multiplicity and the proof is such type a is similar to B if there exists some P as A equal to P B P inverse. And from this expression we can write P inverse A P equal to B. Therefore, since we have to prove similar matrices always have same eigenvalue with multiplicity, that means we have to prove Characteristic polynomial of these two matrices are always same. That means determinant of A minus lambda I equal to, just put the value A, A equal to P B P inverse. That means this is equal to determinant of P B P inverse minus, we can write lambda I as lambda P I P inverse. Now, from this expression, we can write determinant of P times B minus lambda I times P inverse. And by the property of determinant, this is equal to determinant of P times determinant of B minus lambda I times determinant of P inverse. Now cancel this part. Then this is equal to determinant of B minus lambda I. That means I have got determinant of A minus lambda I equal to determinant of B minus lambda I. Therefore, obviously, similar matrices have same eigenvalue with multiplicity. Okay? But converse not always true. As for example, consider one matrix A whose diagonal entry is 1, 1 and consider another matrix 1, 2, 0, 1 and notice here in both matrix the eigenvalue is 1 1 this is the identity matrix and this is the upper triangular matrix so obviously the eigenvalue is 1 1 but these two matrix are not similar because if a is similar to b then there exists invertible matrix p such that b equal to p inverse ap okay and here A means the identity matrix. That means this is equal to just P inverse P. And P inverse P is also identity matrix. So B equal to 1, 0, 0, 1. But here B is different matrix. So B equal to P inverse AP. This does not satisfy it here. So a and B are not similar to each other, but eigenvalue are same. Are you getting? Oh, well. But a, similar matrices always have same minimal polynomial. Then, I have told you similar matrices always have same eigenvalue. 
but similar matrices have need not be same eigenvector. When b equal to a, then obviously these two mat matrices same, so always same eigenvector. But when b not equal to a, then consider x be an eigenvector of the matrix A corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda. Then obviously Ax equal to lambda time, times x. Now, we have to prove x is also eigenvector of B. Then, Bp inverse x equal to if B is Similar to A, then B is equal to P inverse AP. Now put the value B here. Then this would be P inverse AP times P inverse X. And P inverse P, P times P inverse means identity. That means this is equal to P inverse AX. And I have considered X be an eigenvector of A corresponding to lambda. So AX equal to lambda times X. That means this value is lambda times x and since lambda is an scalar so this is equal to we can write lambda times p inverse x that means b times p inverse x equal to lambda times p inverse x and consider p inverse x equal to y that means by equal to lambda times y which is not equal to x because I have considered it the eigenvector of A is x. So similar matrices have need not be same eigenvector. Are you getting OA? Exist also other property. Let A and B be the n cross n matrix over the field A such that a and B both similar matrix. Then always determinant of A is equal to determinant of B and trace of A equal to trace of B and if rank of A equal to N that means if full rank exists then rank of A always similar to rank of B. This is the condition of similarity. But here also converse not true. If determinant of A equal to determinant of B, this does not imply these two matrices are similar. Similarly, if rank of A not equal to rank of B, this does not also imply these two matrices are similar. Okay. Now let's see the proof. At first, I will prove, consider A is similar to B. Then I will prove, determinant of A equal to determinant of B. This proof is very easy to prove. Since A is similar to B, that means A equal to P inverse BP. We have to prove, determinant of A equal to determinant of B. That means apply determinant in both sides. Then determinant of A equal to determinant of P inverse BP. Now we can write this as determinant of P inverse times determinant of B times determinant of P. Now write this as together. This would be determinant of P inverse times P times determinant of B. Obviously P inverse P equal to identity and determinant of identity always 1. So, this is equal to determinant of B. So, if two matrices are similar, then their determinant are always equal. But converse, not true. Now, I will prove the third property. If rank of A equal to N, that means A has full rank, then always rank of A equal to rank of B. The proof is such type as rank of A equal to N, then by the rank nullity theorem we can tell rank of A plus dimension of null space equal to dimension of Fn. Since rank of A equal to N, 
So obviously dimension of null space is equal to zero. And we have to prove null space of B equal to only zero vector. For this, consider B belongs to null space of B. That imply B V equal to zero. Now multiply both sides by P. Then I will get P B V equal to P times zero equal to zero vector. And obviously P B means A times P inverse V equal to zero. That means P inverse V consists the null space. That imply obviously P inverse V equal to zero. Now multiply this equation by P. Then P times P inverse V equal to zero. P means obviously this is zero and since P times P inverse equal to identity then that imply V equal to zero. And since V equal to zero that means obviously dimension of null space is only contains zero vector and since dimension of null space only contains zero vector then by rank nullity theorem we can tell rank b equal to n are you getting o n we will see if a and b both similar matrices then they are trace always same and this proof is very easy type proof consider trace of b and since a is similar to b so obviously b equal to p inverse ap now consider the property trace of ab we all of us know trace of ab equal to trace of b consider one matrix p inverse a and another matrix p then apply the condition trace of ab equal to trace of ba then this is equal to trace of p inverse p times a and obviously p inverse p means identity that means this is equal to trace of a that means trace of b always similar to trace of a when a is similar to b are you getting oa today i will stop here in my next video i will discuss new concept of linear algebra diagonalization what is the concept of diagonalization but at first i will highly recommend you please see today's video with pay attention because this idea is very important for any competitive exam see you soon stay safe and stay positive always and don't forget to do subscribe my channel for more videos Thank you so much.